Hello, I'm Sam, and together we're going to take a look at the Core Image Framework. In this first section, we're going to investigate the Core Image Pipeline. That's a hugely optimised and efficient way of doing image processing, including things like filtering, utilising both the CPU and the GPU. First up, we'll learn how to create a CI image. That's the object that represents an image within the Core Image Framework and behaves as a model object, very much like a CA layer from Core Animation. In the resources for this playground, there is an image called IMG5267. And we're going to import that as an image to the Core Image Framework. First up, we need to get the URL. We'll do that with bundle main URL for resource, IMG5267. And the extension is HEIC. That's standing for the High Efficiency Image Format that has been present on iOS for a few years now. Once you've got that URL, then you can use the CI image initializer contents of URL to initialize the image. Bundle main URL for resource with extension returns an optional, so let's stick an exclamation mark on the end of there. Like we're pretty confident it exists. Once you let the playground complete running, you'll notice it does load an image of my nephew Rupert. It's a really massive image and it's also rotated in the wrong direction. This used to be a really irritating problem in Core Image, but since iOS 12 there's quite a nice little option you can provide at import time that will respect the flag that determines the orientation of an image. Going back to the CI image contents of URL initializer, it also has an options parameter that takes a dictionary with the key is of type CI image option. You can see there's all kinds of things in there. The one we want, apply orientation property, and the value there will be true. And if we run that again, you can see that now the image is imported and it's correctly oriented as a portrait image. If you take a look, then you notice that this image is pretty massive, 3000 wide, 4000 high. And that's because that's the resolution that it takes on the phone. However, playgrounds are so slow that it would be quite helpful if we could resize that. And luckily, CI image has a load of utility methods on it that will allow us to do that. One of which is transformed by CG Affine Transform. So we're going to invoke that and set the CG Affine Transform to a CG Affine Transform scale where both the X and Y scales will both be 0.125. That's scaling it by an eighth of the size. And once we've set that and you run the playground again, you can see it still imports it at the correct orientation, but it's significantly smaller and it took significantly less time. Applying the orientation property is just one of the options that you can use when you're importing a CI image from a URL. So let's take a look at some of the other things that are available to us. I'm going to start out by creating a new options dictionary. And once again, we'll keep the CI image option apply orientation property as true. And then we can take a look at some of the other options available. There's a whole set of them, all beginning with the word auxiliary. And this talks about some of the extra layers that can appear in HEIC files that are generated when you use portrait mode on an iPhone. The three at the bottom, Auxiliary, Semantic Segmentation, Hair, Skin and Teeth Mat, are all new to iOS 13. They're ML-generated masks that attempt to locate the hair, skin and teeth within the image, respectively. Auxiliary Portrait Effects Mat is very similar in that sense, but came in in iOS 12. That's a segmentation of the foreground and the background that's estimated when using an iPhone in portrait mode. For now, we're going to import the auxiliary depth map. That's the map that's approximated using the stereoscopic vision of the camera on the back of the phone and is the raw input for the ML models that generate all of the mats that I've just spoken about. To do that, we set the CI image option auxiliary depth to true and we can then just import that as a new CI image using the same initializer, CI image contents of URL with the options set to the options dictionary that we've just created. If we run that, we can see that it does indeed create a new CI image and take a look at it. And it is a depth map where the darker colors are things that are closer to you. We'll see how we can use this or one of the mats in a future video. Now that we've successfully imported a CI image, we should look at the next phase of the core image pipeline, a filtering. So join me in the next video when we will do just that.